Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're covering the Canon R5 and how I use my autofocus settings for wildlife photography. There's two things I need for wildlife photography for the focus settings on the Canon R5. One is animal eye detect, which is used about 95% of the time for me. And what that's going to do is going to cover from corner to corner anything you see in the viewfinder and it's going to pick out either the body, the head, or the eye of the animal. The second thing I need is going to be spot autofocus, or spot focus, so single point focus. And what that's going to be used for is like moose. For some reason, the autofocus settings on any of the cameras don't capture the eye 90% of the time on a moose. So with that being said, I've got to, you know, use that single point to try to hit it. And sometimes it'll hit with the autofocus, most of time it doesn't. The other reason I need spot focus is if I have a bird in a tree and there's some branches blocking it or a fox behind grass, or sometimes you have an animal that's got some obstructions to it near the face and the eye, but you still want to try to get that body lock or head lock or eye lock. And you will use point autofocus to find like maybe the ear or the tail or the butt or whatever the animal you can get to break through whatever the obstruction is. And then you can use eye autofocus maybe to get the eye autofocus. But anyway, we're going to cover those settings in this video and let's just get into it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, go, we're going to jump over to the red menu and we're going to menu one, the tab one. And we're going to make sure my image quality is set to raw. Uh, I only shoot raw. I don't shoot JPEG. And sometimes I'll shoot C-RAW, but I'm usually always in raw. Um, main reason is I can do more post-processing after the fact through Lightroom and Photoshop and other things and DXOP raw. The next tab we're going to jump to is going to be menu six. So here's where we're going to set our shutter mode. I don't shoot mechanic legs, shoot electronic first curtain almost all the time. Sometimes I go electronic. Now that gives me 12 frames a second and electronic will give me 20. But I don't like electronic because I can't hear the shutter. So when I'm doing it, it's not that I'm filling my card up or anything. It's just that I can't hear it. I don't have that tactile sound to the shutter. So I stay in electronic first curtain for most of the time. So let's jump out of this menu. Okay, the next thing we're going to jump to, actually, I'm going to cover this next setting here after the shutter mode. We're going to look at uh, release shutter without card. I turn that off because I've had times where I've left my card, and then it'll tell me real quickly when I try to use the camera, it says, hey, you don't have a card in the camera. But if you leave it on, it won't tell you that. It'll just start taking the pictures when there's nothing to record, save to. All right, so let's go to uh, tab seven. So right here, we're going to do, do one thing. We're going to go down here to exposure simulation and we want to make sure that's enabled why that is what gives you when you look through the viewfinder or the back of the screen when you're moving your iso or your shutter speed how you'll see your exposure you'll actually see it what the camera sees if you have it disabled it'll be like your old dslr it's just gonna it's not going to tell you your exposure or show you what the exposure is going to look like so make sure that's enabled all right, now we're going to jump over to the autofocus settings, which is our bread and butter, what we're looking at here. So the first thing you want to do is make sure an AF operation is set to servo AF. That should be default on your camera. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the AF method. So we're going to have two buttons programmed on, this, on the camera. The one button is going to be initiate whatever focus setting you have listed here. And that's going to be our single point. We have to set that because we don't. And we had this maybe to eye autofocus. Anytime you hit that button, you're never going to get a single point. Now you could, and so there's only one you can set up is the animal eye detect on that. So on, on the other button. So we're going to set this one up so you can set it to any one you want, but I use spot AF because that gives me a single point real tight on one spot. And that's what I want to be able to hit that animal or bird, or whatever it is, wherever it is. I want to control where the focus point goes to. The next thing you're going to set up is subject to detect is animals, all right? Because I shoot animals, I don't shoot cars, I don't shoot people, I don't shoot landscapes, I'm shooting animals only. So set that up. Don't worry about the eye detect being disabled because when we set our buttons up, it will go grab the eye for us. Now the next thing should be auto set on your camera. So you want continuous AF to disable and you want focus mode to automatic uh, auto focus, not manual focus. All right, we're going to jump to menu three and this is your autofocus cases i use two on my autofocus cases and what that gives me is it's going to try to track things behind something when it goes a bird goes behind a tree or a fox goes behind some grass it tries to stay on that animal 
you can set your sensitivity and acceleration and all those if you want to. Those are things you need to just tinker with yourself. But I use case two. I know a lot of people use case four. And I, and I think a couple of the last few people I've looked at back when I bought the camera um, about their autofocus head, they were using four or two, and I found two work best for me. So enough babbling there. So let me get out of this menu. So now we're gonna jump over to the orange menu. So in the orange menu, we're going to go down to, I believe it is um, tab three. Yes, it is. So we're going to tab three. We're going to go to customize buttons. Now, how? here's where we're going to set up how our back button focus buttons work on this camera. We're going to hit customize buttons. And the very first thing we're going to change is this shutter button. The reason why we need to change the shutter button is we no longer want that to be our autofocus method. We want this to be where we set our metering and take the picture. That's all we wanted to do, take the picture, right? So by default, it's not set to this, it's set to AF method, right? We don't want it to go to AF method because we hit that, it'll override when we're trying to switch to animal eye detect, right? So we're gonna to go to the middle when we were set that metering start. And that's what we set. So all we're gonna do when we push this button halfway down, all we're gonna do is start metering. Now, I'm gonna teach you later in another video, shoot manual, you don't have to worry about metering anyway. All right, so let's dial down. We're gonna dig down here to the AF on button. So that's gonna be this button here, right next to the joystick. And this is the one we're gonna set up, that I set up, because it's the first one I'm always hitting, 95% of the time, remember is animal eye detect. So we're gonna hit that, we're gonna go over here to the, the IAF, and we're gonna set it to that. So what that's gonna do is anytime I hit that button, it's going to look around the screen, it's gonna look for a body, head, or an eye of an animal. It's gonna find it. Next thing we're gonna to go to is the little star looking button. And what we're gonna set that up to, is we're gonna set it to metering and AF start. So what that means is anytime I hit that star button, when I type this star button here, it's going to go to a single point, wherever I have that point. I usually keep it right in the middle, but you can move that single point anywhere you want on the screen. But that's going to put me on that point every time, because what that says is, whatever I've got set in the menu for my AF method, use it. And that is set to single point. All right. And that is pretty much it. So let's back out of this one. We'll set that to the, uh, the AF one, and that's it. So now it's very, very simple. So all I have to do on my camera now, when I go out in the field, is I see a bird in flight. I pull the camera up to my eye. I hit that AF on button. And that's gonna look around the screen. It's gonna say, oh, I see a bird, or I see a fox, or I see a moose. And if it sees a moose, because remember I said it doesn't really want to, for some reason, it will never find the eye in a moose. Sometimes it will, um, but it has to have a little bit of white around there that eye is the same color as the rest of the animal. And I hit it and it'll grab the body most of the time or grab the head and the antlers. Won't grab the eye. Now, if I'm looking at a moose and I'm getting just a headshot of a moose, what I'm gonna use, because again, it won't focus on the eye, it, it, it very seldom does, I'll hit that single point and I'll put it right on that eye. Now I've got the focal plane for the eye of that moose, because the moose doesn't move real fast. If, if they're running, you're in trouble anyway. He's either coming at you or he's going away from you. So. Both cases, not good. Uh, if I've got a bird in flight, again, I pull it up, I hit the AF on button, that's animal eye detect. It's gonna look in the sky, it's gonna look in the full screen of the whole thing I can see in the viewfinder, and it'll see, hey, I see an eagle, he's over in the left corner, and it'll grab the body, and then it'll just jump to the eye. So what I noticed a lot of people were asking questions in the comments on the R7 video I've done before, and they think you got to go to single point, then to the eye. You don't have to do that. All you have to do on 95% of your cases, when you see an animal or bird or whatever, hit that eye autofocus. If for some reason it doesn't jump to the eye autofocus, it doesn't jump to the body, it doesn't jump to whatever, it jumps somewhere else, use the single point. Find your bird on the limb, whatever it is, or between the grass. Get that single point on something, that bird, and it, this little thing will jump to that focal plane of that bird or that animal, and then you can go, let me hit the eye autofocus and just touch it. Don't hold it for a long time because what it's going to do is going to look for that eye and it may jump around. And if you're, like I said, star, you're on single point, you're on that focal plane, you've got through all the garbage maybe. And then you can hit the eye autofocus and see if it jumps to the eye. If it doesn't, just use single point and do it there. Just get on the focal plane. And that's pretty much it. That, that is all there is to set the autofocus up for this camera. 
Very, very simple. Very simple to use. Like I said, 95% of the time, use that autofocus and see if you can capture it. If you can't, use a single point to hit it. And then try your animal again once you're on that focal plane, because sometimes you may have grass in front of a fox. It's maybe two feet in front of the fox. And you get the fox, and now that grass goes out of focus, or most out of focus, and now the camera's on that plane, it can see the contrast in the eye, and I'll use all its machine learning to figure out where it needs to go. That's it, guys. That's the camera. That's the autofocus settings. Super simple. Um, again, if you like the videos, guys, uh, subscribe to the channel, like, comment, all that stuff helps me out so I can get more videos out and the algorithm will pick it up so other people can see it. Um, use this video. I'll, I don't know if I have timestamps in this one because it's super simple. There's <laughs> very little to set up on this to get to Animal Eye Detect. But anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. You guys take care.